This video contains content that some might find disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. They say there's nothing stronger than the bond between a parent and their child. What if on that fateful day when you meet your newborn, that bond is nowhere to be found? How far would you be willing to go to find it? Tonight, our narrator must find that answer for himself. I'm Ryan Bergara, and this is Are You Scared? A show where I tell my friend Shane Madey the internet's scariest stories. So lock your doors, turn off the lights, and let's see if we can make it till the end of the night. The Changeling. The baby strapped to my chest wouldn't stop crying. I walked through the forest in the dusky early evening to a spot I'd picked in the middle of a small glade filled with wild lavender. I tied a thin rope to the empty baby basket I'd set in the center of the clearing, and with the baby wailing on my chest, counted my steps as I moved away from it. Was this guy putting a baby in a trap? I, What's going on I, here? I'm, yeah, I'm just, What's the I, fuck? I tied a thin rope to the this empty such baby. such a jarring basket. start to a story. He didn't put the- Taking a baby to a forest. He didn't put the baby in the baby basket. Uh, Ryan and I don't have babies, so look, we're, we don't get it. You know, is this I what you know, do with a baby? I think this is what you do. You tie them with a rope and you take them to the forest. And you and, just uh, have them hang around? I think it's sort of like, a, you know, you gotta a, do you a, say like, see if hang it survives, out. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You leave it out there, see if it comes home. 100 paces from the basket, I tied my thread to a tree, then turned and continued on in a loop, keeping as close to 100 steps as possible away from the basket, tying the thread to trees as I went. The whole time, the baby never stopped screaming like an air raid siren or a howling demon. These cries had scored my life for months now. Mary and I had been delighted to find out we were pregnant after two years of marriage. We'd always talked about having a big family. I was naturally a little nervous, but determined to be a great parent. My first job was painting the nursery. I picked yellow with little pink fairies, inspired by the stories I'd been told as a boy from my Irish grandmother, Nana. Is this a story about a family that wants to get rid of their baby because it's annoying? It sounds like it. He said, I can't wait to be a great father, and now he's uh, leaving Tying his, his baby, to his a baby tree. in the woods. <laughs> yeah. So I think things might turn a little sour. Maybe it's the a, baby's got like little yellow goat eyes, you know? That's usually a surefire sign of a devil baby. We've met a devil baby. Would you have the heart to kill your baby if yeah, it was the devil? If it was the devil, yeah. She'd always seemed to take a special shine to me, like she was paying closer attention when I was around. As a child, I remember her watching me with a quizzical, studying eye. Whenever I noticed, she'd break into a huge smile, come give me a hug, and ask if I'd seen any pink fairies around. Apart from painting the nursery, my chief role before the baby was born was taking Mary to appointments. The pregnancy was tough. The vomiting started the first trimester, then never let up. Her back ached, her ankles swelled, and her face broke out in acne. I wished there was any way I could lighten the load for my best friend, the light of my life. But all I could do was remind her how beautiful I thought she was. I'd hold her and we'd talk about how it'd all be worth it when the baby was born. Mary went into labor a month and a half early. She'd wanted a natural birth, but after hour two, she was screaming for drugs. Say, <laughs> I'm always she, screaming for that's drugs. That's changed two hours into the workday. <laughs> screaming for drugs at his laptop. And we're like, don't give them to him. Don't give them to him. Do not give them to me, no matter what I say. That's what Shane tells us every morning. Her entire body arched in agony. Howls of pain tore out of her like she'd been stabbed. After what seemed like an eternity of this, a team of grim-faced doctors told us the baby was breech. What does that mean? The baby is supposed to be head first? Yes, baby's supposed to come out head first. So he was, see, he was going down the water slide like this. <laughs> yeah, exactly Instead right. of like this. Yeah. You should be going like that, but baby was doing a whoop. Yeah. You know, didn't listen to the uh, lifeguard at the top. I'm gonna start telling that to lifeguards when they won't let me go fucking head first. I'd be like, I did it when I was born. Why don't you fucking back off and let me go down? Mary was too weak to safely deliver vaginally. <laughs> 
Are you serious? <laughs> Are you fucking I don't know why. serious, dude? <laughs> we just haven't had the term vaginally <laughs> in any. Are you scared? Are you of five sounds? years old, dude? Well, <laughs> I kiss the vagina. <laughs> it's a childbirth. That's true. There's no so other way out. Are they doing a C-section here? She needed an emergency C-section now. Now who's now who's uh, mature? It's me. Still, still me. I, I, still me. I feel like. Mary turned ghost white. She looked at me. Her lips, dry and cracked, were trembling. I clasped her hands in mine. It's going to be okay, I tried to reassure her. As they wheeled her down the white corridors to surgery, the pink hospital signs flew past my periphery. I think that's why the pink fairies of the nursery popped into my mind, with their little wands and wings, pointed toes and painted smiles. I took Mary's hand. She looked up at me and, in the haze of drugs, smiled. Do you think know. she's gonna die? I don't think so. That would be a pretty oh, harrowing wait, episode of our that movie. would make sense. Well, because then that's this why guy's saddled with a devil baby. Or maybe the baby didn't do anything. It was just a bad childbirth, and now he's like, I'm gonna tie you to a fucking tree now. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you took so, my wife, so you dark. son of a bitch. <laughs> And now this is what you get. It's and then really the baby's getting real pissed off. And then the baby will turn into a demon. A mega baby. A mega baby. Yeah. Fueled by hate. In the operating theater, I stayed close to Mary's head, where she could see me. Her lower half was hidden by a big blue sheet. Everything's going to be okay, love, I whispered, stroking her hair. Mary turned to me, opened her mouth, and her features contorted in a scream of pure agony. Her hand crushed me like a vice. Something was wrong. She was feeling the pain. She was feeling them slice into her. Suddenly, an orderly yanked on my arm, pulling me out of the door. Mm, is, this, is this a is British this English writer? Music? Everything's gonna be okay, love. It's all right, love, isn't it? Fucking baby, huh? <laughs> it's all right, love, isn't it? Little devil baby, huh? <laughs> devil baby, isn't it? That's all this in. I swiveled around, trying to claw my way back to Mary, but the orderly said that since the local anesthesia hadn't worked, they were trying general. Moments later, through the window of the operating room, Mary lay still. I stood at the window, rigid, motionless. My eyes didn't leave Mary's face. Not as they pulled the baby out of her. Not as I heard it start to cry. Not as they cut the cord. I dimly registered the blood-soaked doctor holding the baby up to me. But if I'm being honest, I barely gave it a glance. I was staring at my wife, lying there, cut open, gutted. The rest of the time passed in a blur. As soon as Mary came to, she wanted to know where the baby was. I realized in my concern for Mary, I hadn't gone to see her in the nursery. In the trauma of the birth, I guess my brain hadn't yet registered our infant as the newest member of our clan. When they brought our daughter in, Mary's gaunt face lit up. I saw in her eyes, the moment she took the baby in her arms, that she'd already forgotten the pain it caused her. When it was my turn, I held the baby rigidly, my body taut. I tried to tap into the warm feelings other fathers had shared, but they wouldn't come. What was wrong with me? Shouldn't I have that sense I'd heard about, that a part of my heart now lived outside of my body? I started to feel a shame over the indifference I was feeling. Our infant started crying moments later, a shrill, hateful sound as if it didn't feel anything for me, either. This guy doesn't like babies. <laughs> He's reading into the sound this of the- baby hates me. This it baby. cried this because baby. it hated me. I think I fucking hate that baby. I hate my loud child. This is haunting, by the way. This is a haunting experience. I'm glad she's alive, because I thought she was dead for a second. I thought she was a goner. Yeah. Happy to hear she's hanging around hanging with around. this shitty baby. <laughs> the next few days was a haze of doctors and nurses. Relatives came to visit. My dad clapped me on the shoulder and tearfully said that my mom would have been proud of me. And still, every time the baby got near me, it screamed. Someone's gotta tell this guy that's what babies do. Give it a baba. <laughs> I don't know? get it, the baby fucking cries all the time. No one told me about this. <laughs> hey, here's an idea, feed it. Days turned into weeks and the baby cried. It barely slept. It was like a buzzing insect a constant grinding noise. There's not a part of you that would be horrified that if you just really hated your baby after a couple of weeks. Oh yeah, I wouldn't be thrilled. No. You'd be sitting. like, ideally I'd love this baby. Yeah, Oops. ideally. You'd Oops, be, I hate my baby. Oops, you know? I hate it. 
What are you gonna do? Oops, I'm Shane Madey and I'm about to strangle my child. I'm not gonna, don't, gonna... Ins don't insinuate that I'm gonna murder my own child. Oops, if you had a baby you didn't like, just wait, you know? Yeah. All babies are the same, they're pretty boring. You 30 know, day return like, policy. Eh, eh, you know, you yeah. feed them, they poop, whatever. It takes years for those things to turn into like functioning people. I you bet know, you in the future, like 100 years from now, babies will have a return policy. Like you could just zap it back. You got a, you got a weird brain. Mary was weak, so I did the daily jobs changing nappies, housekeeping, trying to get it to sleep. Nothing worked. The moment I held it in my arms, it would writhe and scream like I was burning it. As the pink fairy seemed to watch me bounce this squealing baby around the nursery, I tried the same mantra I'd repeated in the pregnancy. Someday, this would all be worthwhile. Deep down, I desperately tried to believe myself. I was exhausted, but more than that, I was becoming twisted with hate. It's awful, but I looked down at that baby when it was asleep, at its most peaceful, and tried to muster some positive feeling, but I couldn't do it. At best, I felt nothing. At worst, I hated it. This screaming, clawing monster that, despite my hope, never felt like she belonged to me. Does this not scare you? This would be nightmarish <laughs> no, to me. No, I'm not. There's so many parts of my mind that it's like, if I can't control how I'm feeling about something, it's fucking scary. So like, if I was like, supposed to feel these feelings of joy looking at a baby and I didn't feel anything, yeah. that would freak me the fuck out. It wouldn't freak you fuck out, I guess not. I guess I'm not that concerned about it. I feel like if I have a baby, I'll probably be like, yeah, I love, I love this. I think after you have a baby, I'm gonna give you a call three weeks after and it'll be like. How's it going? I'll be like, you know what? You like that baby? I got nothing. <laughs> I fucking knew it. You got me. Click. Maybe it was those pink fairies watching me fail as a father, but I'd been thinking about my Nana a lot and the stories she used to tell me. She was the matriarch of our family, still living back in Ireland. Even in her old age, her voice was solid as steel. I wanted that voice to reassure me that it would just take some time, that I'd grow into the father I'd always hoped I'd be. When I rang her, she sounded like she was half expecting my call. Our conversation was normal and light at first, but before I knew what I was saying, the whole story came tumbling out of my mouth. The pregnancy, the birth, and my irrational, unwelcome hatred. When Nana didn't respond, I thought she'd hung up in disgust. But then, did you watch it after? What? Did you stay with it after it had been born? Did you keep your eyes on it? I went ice cold. No. My Nana, low under her breath, murmured, Changeling. <laughs> <laughs> Can you speak up with the fuck? Did you just say Changeling? <laughs> you can't just say that, Grandma. I'm talking about my child here, and you're talking about the Angelina Jolie movie. Changeling. <laughs> I am hooked, by the way. I want to know what the Changeling well, is. Well, there was that uh, period right after the baby was born where it was gone, maybe it was away. a different, oh, maybe they handed the wrong baby back, or maybe the baby changed into a demon of some sort. Or maybe he was in the waiting room with the other dads, you know, and there was a guy in there, like a real red guy with horns, who yeah. was like, oh, I'm, I'm expecting as well. I see where this is going, yeah. He's you like, get you, it, you, you want, swap you the want, babies. You, want. The you know, be a funny dad humor, maybe you're in the nursery with another dad, and you're like, wanna trade? <laughs> I'm gonna do that one you day. You gotta. Hey, wanna trade? That's really funny. And then when he laughs, don't laugh. Seriously, do you wanna trade? How much? How much for your fucking baby? <laughs> <laughs> My skin erupted in goosebumps. A wave of certainty and familiarity swept over me, as though someone in another room had just called my name. In legend, she told me, fairies weren't just some princess-like girls who granted wishes. The Fae could be monstrous, cool and cunning, alien and otherworldly. There were plenty of stories of fairies snatching children and leaving fake ones in their place. Screaming wretches with ravenous appetites, attention-seeking draining monsters, mother killers. Nana told me that when my mom was a baby, she couldn't summon a lick of affection for her, how she was just a screaming, needing, leeching lump to her. It wasn't until she did the ritual that she got her real baby returned to her. My hands tightened around the phone as I asked, what ritual? What's the deal with these fairies exactly? They sound nasty. What are they doing with the real babies? 
I don't know. If they're exchanging them, where are they getting the bad babies from? The baby store? Bad baby vending machine. Yeah. If I'm a baby, I get kidnapped by fairies. Yeah. I'm loving it. Yeah, that'd be great. They're funny. Yeah, and they're fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have magic. So one of the, you know, as a child, you want magic to be real. Oh, I see what you're getting at, because if you were a real baby that got taken by fairies, if I was real baby and then your baby? father came in and be like, I saved you, I'm bringing you back home. Like, hey, what are you, uh, how about you fuck off? I like the fairies, I want to go yeah, with the fairies. Yeah, let me go back to the fairies. I want to go up to the clouds and eat cotton candy with them. Exactly. A couple days later, I told Mary that she needed a break. I was going to drive the baby to my dad's overnight. She smiled with relief especially when I added that I wanted some alone time to bond with the baby. She noticed the fact that our baby and I weren't exactly on the same page. I got a quick question, and yeah, we'll move along here, but he's not vibing with this baby. No. Maybe a little check-in with the missus to be like, hey, do you hate this baby? Because if the baby's a nasty little husk. But if the baby's good with the mom, I could see why it would be like, hey, this baby sucks, right? Would be like kind of like a hard conversation to have. I'd ask. I don't think you would. I'd ask. If Sarah was like, oh, he's so cute. I love this baby. You'd be like, but he kind of sucks too, right? I would probably get some like covert cell phone footage of the baby being an asshole. Too, yeah, right? or you'd take pictures of the baby and cross its face out in photos and things like that. Yeah, I'd have a whole room full of uh, pictures with the baby. A dartboard with yeah, the baby's face on it. An hour after we left, the baby was strapped to my chest crying as I walked my big loop around the clearing, tying the cord to the trees. Ah, this is the ritual that we joined the story in. Yeah, no shit. Yeah. And it kept crying as I laid it in the basket in the middle of the clearing. I looked down at the screaming creature, wondering for the hundredth time if I was sure about this. But as it wailed up at me, I felt nothing but hatred for it. And so I turned my back on it and walked away. I like him being like, I don't know about this. And then the baby just being a little asshole and being like, all right, fuck you, dude. <laughs> I also like me telling the wife, Deuces. hey, I got it. You know what? I'm going to give you some alone time. I'm going to go bond with our baby. Cut to him tying it to a tree <laughs> and being like, peace, bitch, I'm leaving. I followed the string I had laid out. Nana had said to walk in a loop at least 100 paces away from the baby. The cries became only slightly fainter the further away I moved. I reached the place where the thread began to encircle the glade. I turned around. My view of the baby and basket was now completely obscured by the trees. A small knot of unease coiled in my stomach, but it loosened slightly as I started to walk the loop. Nana had told me it was important that I could not see the baby, that walking around would let the forest know I was there whilst giving the elements enough space to take back their monster. As I walked, I could still hear the crying, but now the sound seemed to be coming from all directions. It bounced off of the trees and could have disoriented me had I not been holding the thread. You know, you would have thought he would have gone to a therapist first or something and not a forest ritual where the fairies take back his monster baby, but I guess this is a story after all. He's listening to grandma. He's listening to grandma. The baby could just be colicky. And he's Who like, is a licensed therapist as well. Yeah, there could be any number of things perfectly treatable that is going on with this baby. That's but true. he's like, you know, first things first, let's leave it alone in the woods for a little bit. Let's put it in the basket. Yeah. I kept walking, almost in rhythm with the baby's drone-like cry. I had to be near the end of the circle soon. I would soon be rounding the corner where the thread was tied to the final tree. And two things happened in the same instant. The sound of crying stopped, and the thread, previously taut, became slack in my hand. My ears rang in the sudden silence. Panic latched onto my throat, and I scrambled towards the clearing, towards the faint outline of the basket. When I got to the glade, I confirmed what some deep part of me already knew. The baby was gone. Hell yeah. Gonna be a tough explanation. No, no, I think good baby is going to come down from the sky like a beautiful angel. Well, if you go home empty-handed, though, and there That's is no That's a problem. Baby, you can't really be like, well, see, here's the thing. I was trying to get a real baby back because that baby was a monster, so I put it in a basket. My grandma told me to do that it. That one's from the evil baby dimension. That's right. We had to do a swap. <laughs> Mom ain't going to be happy. I can't imagine she will be. This wasn't what was supposed to happen. There wasn't supposed to be nothing. The changeling was supposed to be replaced with my baby, my actual baby. 
I tore through the leaves like a mad dog, scrabbling with bare hands, searching for my child. I whirled around, hot tears in my eyes. There, in the shadows on the outside of the clearing, I could make out the faintest movement. Tiny claw arms with branch-like fingers, maniacal grinning faces, flitting shimmering movements, pink flashes, all just out of my vision. Was there also laughing? Drumming? Do they have little tree fingers? Well, I would imagine there's many depictions of them, but I would imagine they cool. are very they are very yeah. sort of arboreal. So there's probably some like little Pinocchios. Yes, little Guillermo Pinocchio types. That is sick. You know, leaves. Uh, like uh, Fauno from El Labyrintho del Fauno. Remember him? No, I don't. What is that? El Labyrintho del Fauno. Oh wait, Pan's Labyrinth? Yes. Oh, okay. Hola, Ophelia. <laughs> Me amo, Fauno. Remember him? I do. Yeah, but just... He's made of trees and such. I guess, but I'm picturing like only the hands being wooden for some reason. Mm, sexy. What had I done? I bolted in a random direction, screaming, begging with whatever was out there. She was gone, my baby. And worst of all, what would I tell Mary? As soon as the thought crossed my mind, I started to just barely hear a distant crying. I froze in place, unsure if I was imagining it. My whole body pivoted, drawn towards the sound like a magnet, like my true north. I started running before I'd consciously processed the sound, leaping over branches and logs. And there, there she was. Laying in some mud, loosely wrapped in her blanket, was my crying darling angel. I picked her up, instinctively tucking her into my coat. He cares. He does, it seems like he it's cares. It's a father's instinct. He's back because the baby- Tuck her in the coat. The demon is gone. Like the, the demon, demon baby's is out. He found his real daughter. What the fuck? Turned to the Godfather. What if the mom now feels the feelings of hating the Oh baby? my God, that would be so fucking funny. And then she goes back out there, does the if ritual. If he was like, I got, don't worry, everything's fine. And the mom was like- the And then she calls up her the grandma. What is this? And her grandma's like, you gotta put the baby. <laughs> what is her grand? Where is her grandmother from? I don't know. You got to put the baby in the ice. <laughs> put the baby in the ice. It got the little circle in the ice with the fishes and dump the baby inside. Then the fish will return the baby to you. <laughs> all these grandmas got different baby rituals from all that. around then, the world. And then the baby comes back and the dad's like, something's off. I'm gonna go put it back in the basket. And they're like, keep saying, I'm gonna take the baby out to go get some ice cream. And each time- <laughs> They just keep swapping out the baby. <laughs> and the fairies are like, what the fuck? <laughs> I just did this. Shh, it's okay, I've got you, you're safe, I whispered, tears flowing freely. For the first time, she stopped crying and nestled deep into the warmth of my jacket and fell asleep. I stood there in that deep and timeless woodland and felt the sensation of her little butterfly heartbeat against my own thundering chest. And I felt the earth under my feet shift as I knew the child in my arms was my own daughter, my own lifeblood. The first thing I did when we got home was repaint the nursery. I didn't want any more fairies in our lives, our perfect family of three's lives. Honestly, the fairies seem like they it did, you know. And they seem pretty chill. They're like, all right, we'll give hey, it back. You, know, you, you did, did the ritual. You put the rope, the little string around. That's right, it was 100 feet. Right. We walked it. 100 paces, we, we you paced did a good it. thing. Yeah. You didn't look at the baby. You got it, here you go. Have a good day. And sure, they did steal his baby in the first place. What did they do to all the babies that never get the ritual? Where, and where is, are those babies? What are they doing? Are the fairies changing their diapers? I'm not really sure. Are they like, we really gotta mop this one up and we've got such little hands. You know, they're like wiping the baby's butt. <laughs> hey, everybody get in we here. We really gotta get in there. Oh, come on, we got another gusher. This is a two dozen fairy job. <laughs> and my hands are made out of twigs. <laughs> Nearly two years later, I can't imagine not bursting with love every time I lay eyes on my daughter. When she smiles, she can get away with anything. A proper little daddy's girl. Mary laughs a lot. My house is plastered with pictures of my girls. Then, a few days ago, Mary came downstairs as I was feeding our daughter cereal and nuzzled into my shoulder. How'd you know, she asked in a demure yet curious voice. Know what? That we're having another, she said, as she put my hand on her still months from showing belly. We are, I yelled, thrilled, grabbing both Mary and our daughter into a unifying embrace. When I finally released them, Mary looked at me, confused. 
If you didn't know, then why'd you do it? Do what? I asked, genuinely with no idea what she was talking about. She grabbed my hand and led me back to our bedroom, then pointed to the wall behind her bedstand. There, only a couple inches tall, was painted a little pink fairy, looking up and smirking. So, are you scared? They're back, baby. Wait, what? It's gonna happen again. But Did you I know what? Something? Honestly, Great. Sure. Buy some thread. Yeah, get get your little basket ready. You did it once already. Go back. Go to the clearing. She gives birth. Be like, great. I'm going to take the baby to the vending machine, get it some peanut M&Ms. You chill here. Yeah, rest exactly. up. Go to the woods. Yeah. Get, you know, that baby is still piping hot. Yeah. And wet with, you know, all the juices. That's right. Put it right out there in the thing and boom, Bob's your uncle. You it got, seems a, you pretty got a, easy. a good one. I mean, these fairies, they don't drive a hard bargain. They <laughs> no. have pretty, they have a code. Yeah. Dilly dilly. Sure, yeah. Nice story. It was a good story. Ireland's weird. Well, thank you, Emily Brady, for writing this story. A classic. I love this is going to be a bedtime story I tell my own children one day. Is it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to tell them I went to the forest and did this myself. Yeah, that would be funny. That Convince funny. your kids that you had to do a ritual to get them from the bad fairy baby world. That's right. Yeah. And I could do it again if they step out of line. Send them back, yeah. I'll send you back. Well, for all those who made it, thank you. We'll see you next week. Ta-ta.